Okay, we're on a Volkswagen Amarok, and I'm taking you straight to the fault. And we'll try and uh, zoom in on there for you. So there we go. Those are no Volkswagen Amaroks. Remember what that is? Basically, you can look on the internet and you can try and find what it is, but you'll never find this on the internet, this information uh, listed. You might find a video about it, but not listed. Okay. So this is a typical website. The fuses, you can see some fuses on this side are shown as mini fuses, and then these are shown as midi fuses, or these are mini fuses and these are just normal fuses. Can't remember the determination of the sizes. That fuse box was incorrect, and it gives you some determinations. This relay plate, even if you turn this picture upside down and you you can see this uh, shape on the relay plate, and you can see this shape here, and you can see this shape here, but all these shapes are vacant, and the amount of relays in the plate are incorrect. And this is all the information you can find for the Volkswagen, Volkswagen Amarok on the internet. Here it is. There you go, there's a picture of Amarok. I'm working on a 2013 model, and this says layout Volkswagen Amarok 2010 2017. So, unless you've got something like old data, Mitchell data, or auto data, some kind of information better than just internet stuff, you go in the wrong location. On top of that, these are the pictures they show for the Volkswagen Amacock relays, fuel pump relays. They're no help whatsoever. Absolutely no help whatsoever. 167? No, it's not a 167. I'll see if it actually shows one. So if you're struggling, this is why you're struggling. There is no information freely available on the internet about the Amarok fuel pump system. So I've got me Hantec 1008A set up. I've got three channels. One, two and three. Channel one is an amp clamp around the positive on the fuel pump. And channel two and channel three are the control wires for the fuel pump relay. So now you're working, now we're working on the fuel pump. And this car would cut out and it had these fault codes. So it's got other faults, but as you can see, we've got fuel pump A circuit open. That wasn't in there. That's because I've got it open. But it had the next fault code, because it's, you see it says uh, P0087 fuel rail, rail pressure, and it does that twice. Uh, the coolant pump, that is open circuit, got to do that as well. And the turbocharger inlet valve, I've not looked at that yet, but we might get onto that as well. So it was just fuel rail low pressure, so I'm suspecting fuel pump for a start, so I've gone straight to the fuel pump basically. So that's what we're looking at. So these are the symptoms we had. The most common reason a car engine cranks but won't start is due to lack of fuel coming into the cylinders. Well, we had a crank no start, and if you want to see a crank no start, there's a guy here in America, South Main Auto, he has loads of them. But this is specifically about the Volkswagen Amarok, or as I call it, Amacock. So I came in here to fuel pump electronics, and I came in and I pressed that. And you can hear it clicking away. So that is the fuel pump relay in there clicking away. If I turn the light on, you can see up here I have probed into the wiring behind it. Okay. And down here, you can see the rest at positive battery voltage and one side of the control gets pulled down and the fuel pump doesn't run. I had done more testing before I got this up at the fuel pump and when, it, when the fault actually occurred uh, we saw the amps drop out and that's why I went to the control on the relay. Anyway, I couldn't get it to recreate the coming on, it was just permanently off so I traced it back to the fuse. And That's what you look at, so these are the kind of readings you're going to get off this car and 
to save yourself a lot of time, go straight to that fuse box and drop the battery and see if it's melted basically. And I understand this is what what is my camera doing? Anyway, I understand this is not the correct way of doing it, but I am just literally gonna put a fuse in there and hope it starts working again. For the short term. Let's go around and see what happens now. So we're back here at the scanner. We'll just go into the fuel pump electronics and start. Oh, I can hear the fuel pump working. Here we go. Oh, I've turned the laptop off. Does it come back on again? Yeah, but well, I think you'll find the... It ain't working anymore. Anyway, you can hear it. I've got to reset the scanner. Let's see if we can do that quickly. So when you've got a hand tech, you just have to switch it off, pull it out. Wait for the computer to recognise it's pulled out. Plug it back in again. Then it goes ding ding. Start the software back up again. And then you'll find we've got the... So here's the... You can see it drawing the amps down here. You can see the control. Flashing down below it. There we go, all happy days. Sorry about the light and the reflection, but uh, the camera's just started doing its own thing. I don't know what it's doing. But there you go. Fix. Once I've got a new fuse box, we're just going to get a new fuse box and fit it. So I'm here editing this video and clearly realise I haven't explained this to you very well at all. Uh, basically, that fuse box on top of the battery needs replacing. But where we started was the the Amarok would basically every now and again cut out maybe while you're driving it's done it once or twice and the other symptom would be you switch it off and you come to start it back up again and I'll have a long crank time or it would just crank and not start and then you'd read the codes out of it and then all of a sudden it would just start for no apparent reason again when I first saw it I checked all the fuses as I normally would, just check every single fuse, and I use the power probe for that. If there is a problem on a fuse, uh, low voltage, getting drawn to ground, short to short to ground, something like that, the power probe is really good at finding that. It found nothing. I didn't pull the fuses out, <laughs> bear in mind, but you know the car was running, there was a fault code for a fuel pump not running, and we were on the uh, verge of putting a fuel pump into this vehicle. Uh, you know, just as a guess because we wanted it to stop happening because we couldn't find anything and I was saying look I need to diagnose this properly I need to put the scope on it and they were like no and I was like I really need to diagnose this properly and they were like what do you think is wrong with it I said well I had a guess let's put a fuel pump in it but if you want my real diagnosis we'll have to diagnose it so we went on the diagnosis route the first thing I did was I put the amp clamp on the positive of the fuel pump and I watched the fuel pump for around about five minutes. Got annoyed at that and then started it up, switched it off, started it up, switched it off. And saw faults happening on my scope, which was scoping the earth of the fuel pump voltage wise. And amps on the positive side of the amp clamp. Then it stopped working entirely. So at that point I went to the control side of the fuel pump relay. Back probe that with the wiring terminals that you can see in there, which are clicky uh, piercing um, probes. I saw that the control to the relay was working absolutely fine. Then I put some more extended length clicky uh, piercing probes in and found there was no power at the relay coming out of it. I thought, hey, I'll put another one in, and there was no power going into it. Obviously, there's no power going into the relay, and there was before. There's a fuse gone or a wire broken, so I went straight to the fuse and found the broken fuse. So I just wanted to explain that at the end of the video here. I know this video is completely backwards, but that's how I got to the initial frames that you saw with that corroded, horrible, melted fuse box. And what I've done today because this is when i've done it today is i basically i sprayed that with contact cleaner and it's all the corrosion has been taken out of that and i put a 30 amp fuse back into it i'm not sure it's supposed to have a 30 amp fuse in it i'll research that tomorrow 
but that's back in that's running it needs a new fuse box or a bypass of that fuse with an external fuse holder something like that will happen to this vehicle and i just need to clear that up because i've been watching the this sequence obviously while i'm editing it and i wasn't making it very clear so hopefully that clears that up for people that have got this far through the video have yourself a nice day and i hope this really helped you out with your amarok so i'm here editing this video and clearly realize i haven't explained this to you very well at all uh, basically that fuse box on top of the battery needs replacing but where we started was the the amarok would basically every now and again cut out maybe while you're driving it's done it once or twice and the other symptom would be you switch it off and you come to start it back up again and i'll have a long crank time or it would just crank and not start and then you'd read the codes out of it and then all of a sudden it would just start for no apparent reason again when i first saw it i checked all the fuses as i normally would just checked every single fuse and i use the power probe for that if there is a problem on a fuse low voltage getting drawn to ground short to short to ground something like that the power probe is really good at finding that it found nothing i didn't pull the fuses out bear in mind but you know the car was running there was a fault code for a fuel pump not running and we were on the verge of putting a fuel pump into this vehicle uh, you know just as a guess because we wanted it to stop happening because we couldn't find anything and i was saying look i need to diagnose this properly i need to put the scope on it and they were like no and i was like i really need to diagnose this properly and they were like what do you think's wrong with us I was, well had a guess let's put a fuel pump in it but if you want my real diagnosis we'll have to diagnose it so we went on the diagnosis route the first thing i did was i put the amp clamp on the positive of the fuel pump and i watched the fuel pump for around about five minutes got annoyed at that and then started it up switched it off started it up switched it off and saw faults happening on my scope which was scoping the earth of the fuel pump voltage wise and amps on the positive side with an amp clamp then it stopped working entirely so at that point i went to the control side of the fuel pump relay back probed that with the wiring terminals that you can see in there which are cliquey uh, piercing um, probes saw that the control to the relay was working absolutely fine then i put some more extended length cliquey uh, piercing probes in and found there was no power at the relay coming out of it I thought, hey, I hope I put another one in, and there was no power going into it. Obviously, there's no power going into the relay, and there was before. There's a fuse gone or a wire broken, so I went straight to the fuse and found the broken fuse. So I just wanted to explain that at the end of the video here. I know this video is completely backwards, but that's how I got to the initial frames that you saw with that corroded, horrible, melted fuse box. And what I've done today because this is when i've done it today is i basically i sprayed that with contact cleaner and it's all the corrosion has been taken out of that and i put a 30 amp fuse back into it i'm not sure it's supposed to have a 30 amp fuse in it i'll research that tomorrow but that's back in that's running it needs a new fuse box or a bypass of that fuse with an external fuse holder something like that will happen to this vehicle and i just need to clear that up because i've been watching the this sequence obviously while i'm editing it and i wasn't making it very clear so hopefully that clears that up for people that have got this far through the video have yourself a nice day and i hope this really helped you out with your amarok so at the end i've done a slow-mo for you you can just go over this it's the 646 relay that you can see below and to the left of the 644 relay and as we look up from underneath you'll see in a second the bottom relay you can see is another 646 relay but it is the next relay up it isn't the lowest relay in this relay plate it is the second one up and as you can see from the 644 it's one across and one down